Hello and welcome to GameSack. This time we are taking a look at our personal favorite racing games. That's right. So no attitude from you suckers out there. These are all awesome games and they deserve props. Absolutely. And first up is one of my picks. We've talked about it before, but I'm going to talk about it again because, like I said, it's one of my favorite racing games. I love playing Daytona USA no matter what, but my favorite version to play is a Dreamcast one here. We've talked about this one before, and again we'll mention that it has the three arcade tracks, two Saturn tracks, and three brand new tracks. That's a total of eight tracks. Hell, I almost can't even count that high. There are lots of ways to play the game, but I usually just stick with single race. If you really want to win, you'll need to unlock some of the better cars like this one, but for me, Daytona has always been about the red and blue Hornet. In fact, I honestly don't care at all about winning. I just like playing the game. And to me, any game that can offer this is a definite winner. The Dreamcast version here is great because it's even better than the arcade graphically in many ways. There's no pop-up anywhere, and honestly, you can't even say that about the arcade version. It also has newly arranged music that's lots of fun to listen to as you play or even later on your portable music playing device. Now, lots of people do complain about the control in this game. But, like I said in a previous episode, just press forward at all times and move the thumbstick around the top part of the circle and you'll do fine. It takes a bit of getting used to, so don't give up right away. This game is the total Daytona package, and I really can't recommend this one enough. Checkpoint. Your time's extended. World Rally Championship, or WRC for short, on the PlayStation 2 released in March of 2002 is easily one of my favorite racing games. Almost everything about this game is good from the presentation to the graphics to the controls. The first thing you're going to notice when you boot up a rally is the video intro of the country you're racing in with footage from a real race. I love this! To me, these videos were awesome. I couldn't wait to see the next one after I finished a country. Every time I watched these intros, I was so excited to get into the game. For a PS2 game, it sure looks great. All the action runs at a smooth frame rate and the graphics are all detailed and full of color. One thing that this game is missing that I wish it had was music while racing. Luckily, you have the chatter of your co-driver to fill the void, and I really like listening to him laying out the tracks as I'm racing. Another thing I really like is the heads-up display. As you're racing and reach checkpoints, each segment is shown in the upper left-hand corner letting you know how you stand. Green means you've won that segment, while red means you're behind for that segment. It's always easy to see how you're doing at any point by looking to see how many green segments there are versus red. Control-wise, the game is great. It's very easy keeping your car in control and, for the most part, on the road. You can slightly customize your car setup before each race by changing gear ratio, tire, suspension, and so on, but I find the automatic defaults work pretty well. My only real gripe about this game is the absurd loading times. <laughs> oh my god. But to look on the bright side, I can have a couple more sips of beer before the race starts. But overall this game just rocks and nowadays you should be able to pick it up for cheap. There are five games in the WRC series made by Evolution Studios. Sadly the USA only got this one, but it's definitely a gem. Very low, right, three, four, three. I love pretty much all of the Burnout games, but I figured I'd talk about Burnout 3 Takedown for this episode. This was available on the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. We're looking at the Xbox version here. What I love most about the Burnout series is the fast-paced arcade action that encourages you to break all the rules. You're actually rewarded for driving on the wrong side of the road, causing others to crash and die, and pretty much anything else just to win. It's a really fast-paced game that definitely requires you to focus on the screen. You've got your typical races against the clock, races against other opponents, and road rage events and what have you, but really some of the most fun events in this game are the crash events. In these you race towards traffic and crash into it, sacrificing your life just for the spectacle of it all. But hey, if you're gonna crash, you might as well take as many other vehicles as possible with you, right? Absolutely. And just like when you crash your car in real life, you'll want to steer your wreck into other vehicles to cause the most monetary damage possible. But don't worry, you're insured. 
you can grab multipliers and other bonuses to help you out with the grand total. Overall, I recommend the Xbox version because you can listen to the music you put on the hard drive instead of the licensed garbage that Electronic Arts wants you to listen to. But either is an awesome game, really. Of course, we both love our OutRun games, but my favorite is OutRun 2006. I bet you can't guess what year this was released in. All games should have the year it was released in the title, and it would make gaming so much more interesting. What sounds more interesting to you? Here's Willow for the NES, or here's Willow 1989 for the NES. I like the latter, but Joe says I'm an idiot. Alright, back on topic. OutRun 2006 is easily one of my favorite racing games of all time. This is the PS2 version, and it was also on the Xbox, PSP, and the PC. The game hits on every category, from music to track design to control. It's a complete package including all stages from OutRun 2 and OutRun 2 SP. New to 2006 is the Coast to Coast mode where you must complete objectives to advance. Hit the cars! This game has 15 licensed Ferraris, and most of them can be unlocked by purchasing them in the shop. Some cars require you to have the PSP version of this game to unlock them. What a ripoff! I guess I'll never own the F-355 Spider. It's ugly anyways. Other than that, this game is the perfect arcade racing game. There's loads of small touches like, if you meet certain criteria during a race stage, different things will fly between the stages like this dragon from Panzer Dragoon. The control is great and drifting is easy. All the stages are well designed and loaded with beautiful eye-popping graphics. The music is good as always, with lots of new songs as well as old songs that have been rearranged. If you really want, you can buy the original songs in the shop to race with. I love all the content in this game. Only time will tell if we are graced with an OutRun 2014. Hell, you know what, I'll even wait six more years and hope for an OutRun 2019. Ah, oh, that would be great. I bet you thought it'd be Dave who would mention F-Zero. Nope, I love this game more than he does, and he loves it a lot. This was a launch game on the Super Nintendo, and it was a great one. It uses Mode 7, and it actually adds to the gameplay instead of being just a gimmick. Now, instead of just worrying how far left or right you are, you also have to worry about what direction you're facing. Yep, Mode 7 makes this possible. It also used the L and R triggers on top of the controller to great effect. They'd strafe you left and right while the D-pad changed your direction. You soon learn how to navigate the obstacles in a course using these methods or even a combination of the two. And the obstacles are many. You've got rough spots on the track, random wind, magnets, gaps to jump, and this is all in addition to your rivals. There are also drone cars driving around the track. Some of them are flashing, which means they'll explode if you touch them, so watch out. Also, your vehicle is allergic to everything outside of the track, so be careful on those jumps. Your opponents tend to hang around you like a pesky mosquito sometimes, making it pretty challenging. But the game is quite beatable. You start out by selecting one of four cars, the circuit you want to race, and then your overall difficulty. The tracks here are great, they're just a joy to race on. The Mode 7 graphics, while really grainy and full of moire, really do provide a convincing sense of motion that many other games at the time simply couldn't. In fact, the Mode 7 effect here is much better than Mario Kart, which came out a year later. The music is absolutely classic, and very fitting. It really does add to the intensity as you race, at least it does for me. I like the Super Nintendo version more than all of its successors as well. For futuristic racers, it really doesn't get any better than this. All right, Joe, that was a great, strong start to our show. I agree. I mean, there's lots of cool games in there. Yeah, there's awesome games in there, but I did notice there is a huge lack of simulation racing games. So what? I like arcade-style racing games more. I mean... Oh, I agree with you 100%. No, no. I, I, Arcade racing games are by far my favorite, too, but there's actually one simulation racing game that I do like very, very much. So. Oh, really? Well, why don't you show us right now? Okay, let's, I will. Yeah. Let's do it. Mode 
MotoGP3 for your Xbox and mine was released in 2005. All right, guys, this is the simulation racing game that I talked about, and I'm wondering why the hell did I even buy this game? I generally hate simulation racing games. Well, it doesn't matter as Climax Studios delivered big time with this one. I love everything about this game, except the music. Luckily, you have the option of changing your soundtracks if you choose. I like Ridge Racer 4 music, so what the hell? As with any simulation game, you race seasons in the MotoGP series. Before races, you can set up your bike to match the weather and whatnot. Then it's off to the races. One of the first really cool things you're going to notice is that the background tilts with your bike as you're turning. This is a really cool thing because I think it gives you the feeling that you're really getting down into a turn. And when you get on a straightaway and get your bike up to top speed, the background starts to blur, which really gives you a cool sense of speed. Awesome touches like this really add to the realism of the game. The control of your bike is perfect. The analog works wonderfully and you can dial in the sensitivity if you need to. For the time, the graphics were truly jaw-dropping with almost exact duplications of the raceways you were racing on. Today it still looks really, really good even though it has slightly aged. Also included with this game is the Extreme Race Mode where you take your racing to the streets of all the cities on the tour. It's a fun diversion but I really like the real, non-extreme track racing a bit better. Truly a great racing game and you shouldn't pass this one up if you still have your original Xbox. Of course we just gotta mention Road Rash. The 3DO 32-bit version is probably the best. This is the PlayStation version and it's really really close to the 3DO. Now I generally don't like combat mixed in with my racing games, but this is an absolute exception. It just adds so much to the game. You can select from different characters and buy new bikes as you earn money, pretty standard stuff. But the game's attitude and craziness is what makes this one so great. It's just so ridiculous and over the top that I honestly don't know how anyone couldn't like this game. If you can't beat your racing rivals by fair means, then you might as well just beat them, period. You beat other bikers and even cops with your fists or weapons like a club or a chain. There's a ton of pedestrians strewn about each level and of course you'll want to make sure you run over as many as possible just because they're there. And you gotta watch out for other drivers because absolutely nobody else in this game cares about you or your well-being. Even when you're simply trying to get back on your bike after being knocked off, other drivers still want to mow everyone down. The racing itself is really fun and very responsive, especially after you get some of the faster bikes. But be careful because you can be doing really well and one little slip up can send you almost to the back of the pack, so you need racing skill as well as fighting skill. The races get longer and longer, so as a whole this game is pretty damn challenging. In fact, I don't think I've even ever beaten it. The graphics were awesome for their time and I think they've aged pretty well for the most part. The video cutscenes are hilarious and they're some of the best ever in pretty much any game. Heck, even the still images are awesome. And this game probably has one of the best licensed grunge soundtracks ever. Too bad I can't let you hear them, but I'd never heard any of the tunes prior to playing the game and they just fit it really well. And I can't leave out the incredibly awesome sound effects and voices which honestly just adds to the game's hilarity. Be sure to pick this game up if you have a PlayStation 3DO or a Saturn. Hydro Thunder! Hydro Thunder on the Dreamcast is almost more of a guilty pleasure. Let's face it, the game is plagued with flaws like, look at this, the sun shining here in the tunnel? Oh, come on. And pretty bad physics between the boat and water. Whoa, hey, I disappeared there. Oh, and look at this clipping. Wait, I always wondered what was on the other side of that wall. The game just has a very unfinished feel to it. But really, other than that, this game is great fun. It's a true arcade racer in a quarter muncher that has the feel of an amusement park ride on every track. Each track is loaded with bright colors and there's always tons of stuff going on in the backgrounds. 
There's lots of secret paths which keeps the racing fresh and always fun. The music even has the feel of an amusement park ride. Unfortunately, you even turn to the top level and the sound effects turn down, the music is still very quiet. Controlling your boat is easy as there are only a few buttons to worry about. Gas, brake, and boost. That's easy. Lots of cool places to race and big ass boats makes this one fun experience. I mentioned earlier about the bad boat to water physics which brings to mind a game that has amazing water physics and really makes you feel like you're riding the waves. And that's of course Wave Race 64. This is one of our favorite racing games ever. We know, we know, we mentioned this in our N64 episode and also our GameCube episode, but this needs to be mentioned again as we won't ever forget how awesome this game is. All the tracks are fun, well designed with waves coming at you from different directions depending on what side of the island you are on. It even has receding tides which changes the courses a bit. The control is tight and you can dial in your jet skis handling to the way that seems best for you. I'm still holding out hope for a great Wii U remake of this game or even a new one altogether. Come on, Nintendo! Sega Rally Championship. It really should surprise no one that Sega Rally Championship on the Saturn is one of my choices. It's just such an arcadey good time. Actually, I've never even seen the arcade machine, but oh well, this one is plenty fun. At first, you get to select from two different cars with either a manual or automatic transmission. Then you get to race on a whopping three different courses. Sounds pretty limiting, doesn't it? But this game has just such an upbeat and joyous attitude that it really doesn't matter. The first thing you might notice is that the handling is a bit soft and sloppy. It does take a bit of getting used to. Your co-driver is always shouting upcoming directions at you, which is pretty useful if you haven't memorized the courses yet. The different courses are cool, like the desert, which has muddy parts as well as a bit of dry dirt. The forest area is about half tarmac, maybe, with lots of cool twists and tunnels. Finally, the mountain course is really tough, with lots of sharp bends. It's really easy to hit the walls on the side in this game, but be careful, as that'll cause you to lose a lot of time. Still, this is one of those games where I don't even care if I win or not. I play simply because it's fun to play. If you don't finish in first place on the mountain track, then it's... Game over, yeah! But if you do come in first, you're rewarded with the lakeside bonus track. This track is really skinny and it's almost impossible not to hit the sides and slow down, especially when you're not used to the track. As you can probably see here, it's been a while since I've raced on it. It's still pretty damn fun though. Finishing first here is the only way to get the ending. The graphics are really, really good for a 3D Saturn game. Hell, it came in a silver box, so you know it's technically advanced, right? The music is great as well, and it really adds to the game's charm. Sega sure knew how to make racing games, I tell ya. What list of favorite racing games would be complete without a Mario Kart game? Not my list, that's for sure. Since I'm a big fan of the majority of Mario Kart games and they could all take a spot on here, I've decided to go with one installment that rarely gets mentioned. This is Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance and it's the Japanese version that I bought when I bought my Japanese GBA. I like this version as it feels a bit different from the other versions of the game. Maybe it's because Intelligent Systems developed this one, I don't know. What I do know is that I really like the backgrounds in this game. Unlike other Mario Kart games, the backgrounds don't always seem to be from a Mario franchise. Like this level where you're racing on a weird looking cheese world, or this ghost level with the scary faces on the mountains. Even the music isn't from the Mario series, as it's nothing we've ever heard before. Most of it is actually pretty good with some nice melodies. The hardest part about this game is controlling it. It takes some time and practice to get the feel for the controls, but once you do, you'll be power sliding around corners and getting the little speed boost at the end. Also included on this card are the tracks and music from the Super NES game. These are not easy to unlock, but they are a great addition and something to work hard for. This is one awesome racing game until your hands cramp up from trying to hold the Game Boy Advance SP. Then you need to take about a 10 minute break until your hands feel normal again, but it's all worth it. This game can be had on the virtual console, and I do recommend it. All 
All right, and those are 10 of our very favorite racing games of all time. Sorry if we didn't include some of your favorite racing games, but, you know, these are our favorite racing games, and yeah. we got to pick and choose this time around. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe we'll make another one, because there are a few more racing games I could have added, but these are definitely the cream of the cream. Absolutely. That doesn't mean these are the only good racing games. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of your favorite racing games? Let us know. I'd love to hear. Me too. Would you? I would. Good. And in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. Wow, this sure looks convincing. What a great day for a drive. I yeah. know, it's like we're really driving. Yeah. We're really, really fast. <laughs> well, they did up the speed limit to 180. Oh, that's true, they did. I forgot yeah. about that. Can you feel like that extra cylinder I put in my car? Yeah, this is kind of scary, actually, Dave. Yeah. So. Well, hold on, I'm thirsty. Can you oh, hold yeah, on? I'll, I'll drive. <sighs> oh, this is it right here. Mm. There you go. Yeah, I'm good. All right, thanks. I got, I got, I took care of myself, so you I did. I didn't need to ask because you always take care yeah. of yourself. This is crazy. Oh my goodness. It's just, I was thinking about our special effects on GameTech, how they're just getting so much better these days. They're so believable. Oh, look, we're here. Oh, I just opened this beer, too. Uh, well, come on. Oh, well. <laughs>